what that music say. Yes, sir, Amos, that music say, good health to all from Rexall. The stars with the orange and blue sign. Yes, 10,000 independent Rexall druggists at the stores with the orange and blue sign bring you the Amos and Andy Show. Written by Joe Connolly and Bob Mosier, featuring Ernestine Wade, Johnny Lee, Amanda Randolph, Roy Glenn, Hal March, Jeff Alexander's music, yours truly, Harlow Wilcox, and starring radio's all-time favorites, Freeman Gosden and Charles Correll. Amos and Andy! How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Freeman Gosden. And I am Charles Correll. We just want to tell you how glad we are to be back with you every Sunday evening for another season of Amos and Andy Shows. And we're mighty happy to be here again this year on behalf of our 10,000 sponsors, Rexall Druggists Everywhere. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, each one of our sponsors is an independent family druggist, your neighbor and mine, and we can truthfully tell you that your Rexall druggist is a good man in your community to know. And that's why we always call him your friendly Rexall druggist. Usually, George Kingfish Stevens, his wife Sapphire, and her mother are constantly bickering. But tonight, in the Stevens household, everything is peace and harmony. Sapphire is playing the piano, and she, the kingfish, and his mother-in-law are spending a pleasant evening singing some of the old favorites. Oh, you take the high road, and I'll take the low road, and I'll be in Scott a lovely morning. For me and my true love will never be again. Of the funny, funny of <laughs> hey, Mama, as long as we is going to Scotland, would you mind arriving there on the same key with the rest of us? <laughs> oh, now, look, George, we're just having fun here. Don't criticize. Well, why does she have to put that sour finish on everything? Sounds something like somebody putting a bag thrape through a clothes ringer. <laughs> George, it's just ridiculous you finding fault with Mama's voice. Why, years ago, she used to make her living with her voice. I sure did. Yeah, I remember her back in the old days. Sitting on the tailgate of that wagon hollering, Fish, fresh fish. <laughs> Whatever happened to your fish horn, Mama? George, I did not sell fish. I had a song and dance act on the stage before I married Sapphire's papa. Yes, George, Mama was a beautiful dancer. Mm. And I want you to know that I was billed as Ramona the Frivolous Flapper. <laughs> <laughs> Stand back, George. I'll show you the step I used to do. Well, now, take it easy, Mama. You might have been a flapper once, but with that 220 pounds, you was more flabby than you is flappy right now. <laughs> Mama, watch it, Mama. Oh, George, George, Mama knocked herself out. She fell right into the piano. Yeah, look at that. She knocked out 10 or 20 keys off the thing. <laughs> oh, no, that's a bridge land ass. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, she must have scattered the thing there when she hit her head on the stool. Oh. George, do something. Do something. Mama? Mama, you all right? Oh, daughter. Oh, it's my back. My sacroiliac. I done slipped that disc again. Oh! Oh, George, George, it's Mama's back again. Oh, this means another session in the hospital. Yeah, it looks like dry dock for the old windjammer again. <laughs> Well, George, thank heavens this time we got that health and accident policy. Uh, health and accident policy? Yes, George, the one we took out last summer. The policy you've been keeping up the payments on. I've been giving you the money every month. Oh, uh, that one, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've been keeping up the payments on that, ain't I? Every month, yeah. Mm, uh. <laughs> 
George, please go in the kitchen and get a cold towel for Mama's head. Yeah, and while I was in there, I'm going to get one for my head, too. Uh. <laughs> That must have been something last night, Kingfish. Your mama-in-law's back giving out on her like that. Oh, yeah, and it was something more there. The fella that uh, come with the ambulance couldn't get up off the floor. He finally had to stand over to the zoo for the elephant man. The elephant man? Yeah, he was the only one in greater New York that had experience getting anything that big up on his feet. Yeah, well, tell me this. Just what is this slip disc business that she's got? Well, the doctor explained it to me, and they, uh... You see, your backbone ain't all in one piece. Mm. He say that it's like a stack of dishes piled up. Mm -hmm. And when you get a slip disc, it's like one of the dishes down at the bottom popping out of the pie, you know what I mean? <laughs> mm. You know, maybe I ought to see a doctor. Every once in a while, I get some pain down around the blue plate myself. <laughs> now, like I done told you, and my big problem is I has done let our accident policy lapse up on us. Mm. You see, Sapphire have been giving me the money to pay the premium, but I done spent the money. Now, that's the truth. Oh, yeah. Well, you was in a mess, all right, Kingfish. I'll see how I was in there. I stone broke. I don't know how I'm going to get my mom-in-law out of the hospital when it comes time to pay the bill. Yeah, well, I don't either. By the way, uh, you got any money in there? You've been doing pretty well with finances lately, ain't you? Well, I'd like to help you, Kingfish, but right now I'm kind of in between checks. Between checks? Yeah, I just spent the last of my unemployment check, and my compensation check from the city don't come in until the first of the month. That's the one they was paying me, you know, for that garbage truck that run over my foot while I was sleeping in the alley. <laughs> Nasty accident, wasn't it? Yeah. Then, of course, I was still waiting for the money from that patent medicine company for that endorsement I give them. Uh, what endorsement is that? Well, you know, the one where I rid them that I drunk four bottles of their medicine and growed a new gallbladder. <laughs> yeah, well, it's nice to have a lot of financial lines in the fire like that, ain't it? But I don't know what I'm going to do. I was trying to rack up my brain here now. Well, what about your automobile? Did you ever think of selling that? Yeah, I took it around to that used car dealer, Smile in Sydney. Mm -hmm. But he told me there ain't much of a market for a 1922 Pierce Arrow with one headlight. <laughs> On top of that, when I was ready to leave, I couldn't get the thing started. Smiling, sitting there charging me five bucks to tow the thing off his lot. Yeah, well, with your mom-in-law in the hospital with a slipped-up disc, why, that's at least going to give you some time uh, to raise the money. Yeah, that's one thing in my favor, the time, Elephant. And, of course, you might be lucky and get a break. While she's in the hospital, your mom-in-law might develop pneumonia and kick the buck up. Yeah, that's no good neither, Andy. You see, six months ago, uh, when I was short of money, I done sold the family plot. Oh, I tell you, no matter which way the old lady goes, I was in trouble, and <laughs> Oh, Sapphire, dear, I was home. Oh, George, I've been waiting for you. I just come from the hospital, and I got wonderful news about Mama. News? What's up? Oh, George, the doctors looked at the x-rays this morning. It ain't a slip disc after all. Mama just strained the muscles in her back, and she can leave the hospital tomorrow morning. Uh, what? Now, now, wait a minute, sir. Now, 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 now just a yes, minute. Yes, George, I want you to go down and pay the bill first thing in the morning so Mama can be discharged. With the x-rays and the specialist they called in, it comes to a little over $100. Ain't we lucky we got that accident policy? Mm, yeah, we really lucky, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well... I'm going on in and get supper started. Oh, me. The old horse is going to get better. <laughs> I tell you, the next time I get married, I'm going to pick a brittle bone, old lady, for a mother-in-law. That's right. <laughs> Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist. One of the 10,000 independent druggists who have made the word Rexall part of our own store names because we recommend and sell Rexall drug products. One of the products our customers ask for very often is Rexall aspirin. And I want you to know three reasons why. First, there's no faster acting aspirin made. Second, every tablet contains five full grains of pure aspirin. Yet the bottle of 100. Rexall aspirin costs you little more than one-half cent a tablet. So, 
Never ask for just aspirin. Ask for Rexall aspirin at Rexall drugstores everywhere. The Kingfisher's mom and law is getting out of the hospital today, huh? Yeah, Amos, that's right. They done found out that there was nothing wrong with her sacra Cadillac. <laughs> Tell me this. How in the world is the Kingfish going to get his mom and law out of the hospital if he ain't got no money? Well, the Kingfish done cooked up a scheme, you see. He's he going to give the hospital a check to bail out his mom and law Yeah, but the Kingfish don't have no bank account. Yeah, but he's going to give the hospital a check on a trick fish's bank. I'm going to be down at the lodge hall myself, sitting by the phone to verify the check in case the hospital calls up about it. Andy, now look here, I'm going to tell you something. You shouldn't be a part of nothing like this. That's dishonest. Oh, no, no. The kingfish figures it'll take some time for the check to bounce, and by then he can raise the money. You see, Amos, the kingfish ain't doing nothing crooked or telling no lies. He's he just rearranging the truth in his favor. <laughs> Here's the cashier's office. If the hospital here don't take this phony check, I don't know what I'm going to do. I hope I get a happy, pleasant fellow here. Well, a very good morning to you. What can I do for you on this pleasant day? <laughs> hmm, the regular author Godfrey. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Oh, nothing, nothing. I, uh, oh, uh, I, I'd like to pay my mom-in-law's bill. She's the old hen on the fourth floor that's done sprung a wishbone. Her name is Ramona Smith. Oh, yes. Yes, she's being discharged this morning. No. I have the bill in the file. I'll be back in a jiffy. <laughs> hmm, I really got a jolly boy here. Wonder if I ought to raise this check a little bit. That happy chuckle ought to be worth an extra digit or two there. No, I better leave well enough alone here again. Hey. Are. Here's the bill right here. That'll be $108.36. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got the check already made, don't you? There you is right there. Oh, yeah, yes. It's dated. $108.36. What's this? The Hudson Bay and Sourdough National Bank <laughs> and Trust Company of Saskatchewan, Canada? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've been banking up there for years. Uh, matter of fact, that's my home up there. Uh, yeah, I was a Canadian. Oh, you're a Canadian? Oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. My father was a genuine Canuck, and my mother was a Labrador retriever, you see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Fine old family, fine family. Yes, yes, I see. Well, I'm afraid we can't accept this check. We're not allowed to take any checks we can't verify. Yeah, well, now, that's where I got you, mister. You see, it so happens that this bank of mine got an office right here in New York City. Yeah, uh, there's the phone number right, right there on the check. See well, that? well, that's different. I'll call them right away. Oh, yeah. oh, that's a fine bank up there in Canada. The Eskimos swear by it. <laughs> they make a lot of GI loans on igloos. <laughs> uh, hello. Hello, Hudson Bay and Sourdough National Bank and Trust Company of Canada, Harlem Branch. Manager Brown speaking. How do you do, Mr. Brown? I have a check here I'd like to verify. Yeah, well, that check is okay. You can let the old lady go. <laughs> well, I beg your pardon, Mr. Brown. I haven't given you the depositor's name yet. How do you know the check is good? Listen, do you run a hospital over there? Oh, that's right. Is I trying to tell you how to take out an appendix? Well, no. Well, then don't try to tell me how to run my bank. <laughs> Look, Mr. Brown, the check is signed by George Stevens in the amount of $108.36. Is it good? Yes, it's good. And tell him to get back on over here. I'm getting tired of sitting by this phone. <laughs> hmm. uh, is it okay, mister? Yes, yeah, he verified the check. But that is the oddest bank manager I ever talked to. Yeah, well, you see, he used to work at the North Pole branch. And he ain't been down here long enough to let his head thaw out you. 
start braying on him like a popsicle. Well, here you are, Mr. Stevens. I've receipted your bill. You can take your mother-in-law home now. Oh, uh, thank you, sir. Yeah. And I, I'd just like to point out the sign over our desk. The you sign. notice we're a member of the Merchants Credit Association. Mm, uh, Naturally, <laughs> if there should be any discrepancies in this check, we'll turn it over to them for action. <laughs> 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 yeah, sir. Thank you, Moser. And if you should ever be up around Hudson Bay, be sure and drop in. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> yeah, Andy. Come about an hour ago, a special delivery registered letter. Yeah, well, it must be reporting. Why don't you open it? Well, I was going, Andy, but something on the envelope done slowed me up here. I noticed it was from a law firm. A law firm? Yeah, look at the name of that law firm. They say, Ironside, Strongheart, and Bull. Yeah. That sounds like the type of law firm that runs them weekly excursions to Alcatraz. <laughs> Open it up, Kingfish. Well, not, not so fast, then. You got to ease a letter like this out of the envelope. You know, you can't jump at nothing like this. Ease it out, you say? Yeah, like taking the fuse out of a bomb. Oh, yeah. If the thing is going to blow up in your face, it's better if it blows up a little at a time. Uh, let me cut this flap here a little bit, yeah? There. Now, I'll ease it out and take a peek at it, yeah? Let me see. What do you see? My dear sir. Well, so far, so good. Peek in there again. I see a word. L-I-T-I-G-A-T-I-O-N. Litigation. You ever heard of that word before, in? Oh, sure, that's nothing. That's a building where the ambassador lives when he's overseas, like the American litigation. <laughs> well, you were thinking of levitation. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's litigation, right. Litigation, yeah. litigation. I don't know just what it means, Andy, but that word sure got a lot of courthouse syllables in there, Andy. <laughs> Ain't you got no idea what it means? Well, let's break the thing down here. Now take the first part of the word. Take lit. Mm. Lit is the past tense of light. Yeah. Oh, I get it now. I get it. It means somebody's going to light out after you. And I'm going to take another peek at this letter here. Wait a minute. i got to focus on the words here. F-E-L-O-N-Y. Felony. What does that mean? And that is Latin for up the creek. <laughs> Get this letter out here and see what I got in here. Yeah, read the whole thing there. Go ahead. Let me see here. Dear sir, letter return. Lawsuit. Uh, committed felony. And will turn over to the police. Mm. Oh, me, Andy. The hospital done got my check back already. A man from the law firm is going to be here at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. He said if I don't have the money... They're going to turn the whole matter over to the police. Yeah, well, what you going to do, Kingfish? Well, I don't know, but if I don't do something, I'm going to end up with an outside room at that iron wall door up to Hudson. That's what's going to happen. Well, if it isn't Harlow Wilcox, and how are you this new season? Fine, Mr. Rexall, druggist. I was just going to tell everyone about Rexall mouthwash with chlorophyll. Oh, yes, indeed. The mouthwash that works three ways. It cleans as it sweetens as it deodorizes. That's right. You see, Rexall mouthwash with chlorophyll has the natural breath freshener. Indeed, it does. It has chlorophyll, and that's not all. It has a foaming action that floats away food particles. Yes, friends. And a special ingredient... Oh, yes. A special ingredient that assures greater dispersion in the mouth and deeper penetration. Isn't that correct, Harlow? Well, that's what I was about to say. And you said it very well indeed. I'm sure many customers will be asking for Rexall mouthwash with chlorophyll. At Rexall drugstores, everywhere. call my lawyer, Al Gunko and Jerry Calhoun, to come over here two hours ago. Oh, I hope he come up with some way to get out of this mess. After all, I... Now, how you, Kingfish? Well, Al Gunko and Jerry Calhoun, what took you so long to get over here? Oh, I stopped over by the United Nations building. 
See, I read in the magazine that Vashinsky done bought himself a new American suit, and I dropped over there to see how it looked. Yeah, I heard about that new suit. Yeah, when I got there, he was standing up in front of the assembly, waving his hands and just shouting and going crazy and everything. I never seen a man that mad. He stood up there and he said, Kravnikov, oh, Chichonia, Pastor Vorich, Samovich, and that's Gufnia. <laughs> well, I, I have to translate what that meant. Yeah, what do it mean? Sam, you made the pants too long. <laughs> Mind that, Calhoun. Did you figure somewhere out of this bum check mustard I in? Well, now, Kingfish is going to tell you something. With that iron side, strong heart, and bull after you, there's only one thing for you to do, and that's to go in hiding until this whole thing blows over. Yeah, go into hiding. Yeah. You was right, Calhoun. I'm going to pack my stuff up here, and I'm going to move up to Anders for a while till I can figure a way out of this mess. Yeah, well, you better act fast, because if this your lawyer ever catches up with you, you is a dead pigeon. Well, tell me this. Couldn't you talk to this lawyer for me, Calhoun? Well, now, I'd like to you, but, uh, but, but I got to go up and see my cousin, Murgatroyd. Oh, Murgatroyd, the bebop hipster, huh? <laughs> yeah. Is he in town again? Oh, man, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Him and his band been here for about a week, old Murgatroyd. <laughs> you know, there was a lot of excitement up at his place the other day. One of the most ferocious lions they ever had in captivity done escaped from the zoo around the corner, and they were looking for him all night long. And in the morning, when the landlord went up to wake up Murgatroyd, there was the lion sitting in a chair right by his bed. Holy mackerel, right in the room with Murgatroyd? Yeah. So the landlord called the policemen, and they called the keepers up there, and it took eight of them to get that wild animal out of his room. Yeah, well, what was Murgatroyd doing? Sleeping. <laughs> Sleeping, huh? Yeah, one of the policemen finally shook that crazy bobster and woke him up. Then the policeman said to him, he said, Murgatroyd, how in the world did that lion get in your room? Well, what did Murgatroyd say? He said, search me. He was sitting there when I went to bed. <laughs> Let me get my bag packed here and get out of this lodge hall. Calhoun is right. I got to go into hiding till I can raise that money. Oh, what a mess. If them lawyers ever... Oh, that must be in there. I asked him to come over here and help me with the bag. Oh, uh, come in. Excuse me. I'd like to know the whereabouts of George Kingfish Stevens. Uh, you say you would like to know the whichabouts of whom? <laughs> Look, I'm from the law offices of Ironside, Strongheart, and Bull. Huh. I understand Stevens is a member of this lodge here. Yeah, well, uh, yes, he is. But then again, he isn't. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, uh, he once was, but he now ain't. That's, that's what I want to tell you. He uh, resigned? Yeah, well, on a more or less permanent basis. You see, he fell out of an airplane. That's what he asked. That's what he done. He fell out of an airplane? Yeah, sir, that's what he done. Fell out of an airplane, yeah. Now, just a minute. He issued a bad check to a hospital two days ago. Now, when did this happen? Uh, just yesterday. Uh, you see, Mrs. Stevens was flying out to California on business. And you see, it was his first plane flight. And he got up to wash his hands and not being familiar with the plane, why, he opened the wrong door by mistake. <laughs> Are you on the level here? Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. They found him two hours later in a cornfield in Iowa. <laughs> he had a cake of life boy in one hand and a surprised look on his face. <laughs> but, uh, were the authorities notified? Oh, sure, yes, yeah, sir. Somebody called the fire department. They give him artificial respiration for two hours. Oh, I tell you, that stuff ain't what it's cracked up to be. <laughs> Listen, I don't believe a word you've said about this George Kingfish Stevens falling out of a plane. It sounds just like a trumped-up story. No, sir, it's the truth. I tell you, mister. Uh, uh... Uh, hiya, Kingfish. Oh, me. Oh, I didn't know you had company, Kingfish. Just a minute. This man called you Kingfish. Oh, yeah, sir, this man, yeah. Sir. Well, you see, uh, this fella here... Is the late Kingfish's friend. He's so upset about 
His friends are quick to departure or the trip to the great beyond that he ain't recovered from the shock yet, you see. Every place he look, he think he see the kingfish. Ha! <laughs> now, just a minute. Oh, yowza, yowza. Oh, it happened to him before. A few years ago, his dog died, and he went around calling everybody Rover. <laughs> Many of the afternoon, I went out in the backyard and, and buried a boon just to please him. Yeah. Hey, uh, what is going on around here? And uh, as you know... Some lawyers is looking for our late friend, George Stevens. I was just explaining to the man here that our late friend, George Stevens, done fell out of airplane and won't be able to make good on that bum check he give to the hospital. You understand what I'm talking about, don't you? Oh, sure. You think I has a dummy or something? You and this year fella is making up a story to tell the lawyers when they get here. <laughs> I thought so. Look, Stevens, I've had enough out of you. Now, you have the money to cover this check, $108.36, in our office by noon today, or we're turning this whole matter over to the police. Yeah. Now, listen, Andy, you stupid dummy. You done messed up the whole thing, coming in here calling me Kingfish. Why did you have to call me Kingfish at a time like this? Well, I am sorry. I won't do it again, Rover. <laughs> but uh, what are you going to do now? And, uh, I've only got one thing left. You see, we has got a fire and theft policy on all our furniture and possession. Mm -hmm. Now, the policy is paid up for three years in advance. Now, I'm going to cash in the thing as of now and get enough money to pay off on that bum check. Well, you think that's a smart thing to do? It's the only thing, uh, because I, I got to, Andy. I got to do it. Because if I don't have that money by noon... I just have to play a return engagement in that Iowa cornfield. That's what's going to happen. Well, I done cashed in the fire and theft policy and paid off the money on that check. My troubles is over. I get on back up here to the house now. And holy mackerel, what's that in front of my house? Fire engines. And look at the smoke. Oh, me, what is that going to do? Oh, here comes Mama. Oh. George, oh, George. George, I'm so glad you finally got home. Oh, we've had a terrible fire. Where's the policy, George? Oh, Mama, you mean to say our furniture and all our possessions and everything is burned up? Oh, no, no. Me and Sapphire managed to carry everything out before the fireman got here, George. Well, then what does you want with the fire insurance policy for? Oh, George, I don't want the fire policy. On the way down the steps, Sapphire fell down and broke her arm. She wants you to come right over to the hospital with the accident, Paul. Oh, no. Since I got rid of all those old skin creams and changed to Anne Delafield's all-purpose deep cream... I wish you women could see my dressing table. I wish you women could see her skin. That golden top jar of all-purpose deep cream simply gleams with beauty. And her complexion, that glows with beauty, too. And Delafield's all-purpose deep cream is a night cream, a cleansing cream, a throat cream, eye cream. Yes, one complete cream for sensible modern women. At Rexall Drug Stores everywhere. The stores with the orange and blue sign. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, rely on your Rexall family druggist. And when you visit him, would you be kind enough to tell him that Amos and Andy sent you. Be sure to listen to our good friend Bing Crosby, who is on tonight. Thank you and good night. See you next Sunday. For three more days, only three more days, your Rexall druggist will buy you an extra 12-day supply of plenamins. Rexall's multivitamins when you buy your regular package of plenamins at your Rexall drugstore. Be sure to be with us at the same time next Sunday when your Rexall druggist will again present the Emerson Andy Show, directed by Cliff Howell. Stay tuned for the Bing Crosby program, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. This is the CBS Radio Network.